All right, um, we'll probably just get into it now because we can't wait too much longer. Um, I think this week uh, may be a little bit longer than last week's, but not too long. As you can see, I've, I've written out most of it. Um, just to save us a little bit of time because I know you guys doing the work is probably going to take you a little bit longer than me explaining or going through things. Yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, a few of you um, sent through some emails regarding questions and help you needed uh, throughout last week, which is good. It's good to see people reaching out and people getting their work done. I can see um, majority of you have, have, uh, are up to date. Even some of you were uh, further ahead than you need to be, which is always nice to see. Um, there are still a few people, though, that are a little bit behind, and you guys know who you are. Um, so if you can please get, get your stuff done, as they do need to be completed. Um, and as always, if you need some help, um, send me an email, and I'll try to help you. Um, especially considering I'm starting uni again next week. So um, I've had a little bit more time um, during this lockdown to answer you guys' questions, but once I do get back into uni, I uh, will be, uh, I will not a little bit more busy, but a lot more busy, um, with my own, um, studies, but, um, I will always try to get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Um, but anyways, we'll start the lecture now. So this week, uh, like I said last week, we're doing uh, power loss and efficiency. So we'll just start off with what is power loss. So we've got power loss here. Um, there's a few ways you can describe it. One is it's wasted energy. Um, this one here, this line here is probably a little bit more um, better, better described. It's unuseful power consumption. Now I've highlighted, not highlighted, put this in capital, it's unuseful here because I'll, I'll give a little bit of an example of what unuseful power is because here, in this next line, you've got unuseful power is, is different depending on, on your appliance. So unuseful is not the same in, in each appliance. Some, some power consumption will be a loss for one appliance and to another appliance it may be not a loss, it may be what it wants. Um, so here's an example here. So power given off as heat is great for a kettle mostly because uh, this is because of efficiency. We will get into that later. Uh, so for a kettle, you, you have a little element in there. It, um, it gives off heat and it boils your water. So that's great. That's what we want. But in, uh, it's bad for an engine. An engine we want, uh, we don't want it to be hot. We, we want it to be as cool. We want it to spin to do its work. So that's the, the main objective of a motor is to spin and give out torque. Uh, and power it's not to generate heat we don't want heat so that's why it's heat is great for a kettle but bad for an engine and that's what i mean by uh, unuseful is um, a perceivable word it depends what the appliance is so an example of loss so this is just just describe uh, what losses or what loss could be within an appliance. Now there's many different examples uh, down here, I'll go down a little bit further, we'll be doing motor losses but I wanted to give you guys an example of something that wasn't just a motor because of course there's, there's losses in a lot of things around us. Uh, I'll use a kettle again. So a, a kettle uses the element to, to heat the water but in that process, the surrounding parts of the kettle are also heated. So say it's within, uh, I don't know, a standard kettle, there's some plastic surrounding it, keeping the water in. That plastic is also getting hot. Everything around it is still getting hot. Um, so heating those parts, on this part here, is unusual for our task. Our task is to boil the water and only the water. So that's why it says here, hence it is a power loss. So heating the parts surrounding the water, it's unuseful for our specific task, which is to boil the water. So that's what a loss is. That's a, well, just a, one example of what loss could be. Um, yeah, from there we'll move on. Uh, if you guys have any questions, of course, put them down there. Uh, sorry, guys. Okay, so this is just... Uh, Power input and output. 
Um, so and I've written here P out because we're going to be writing it a few times more. So to make it easier for ourselves, I would, for myself, sorry. <laughs> sorry guys, I had a bit of a headache today, just to uh, warn you from muddling up my words. Um, so power out is useful power uh, to the task. So that's really important again, you know, as to whatever the task is, what's, what's the objective. Uh, this is also known as rated power. So power out is also known as rated power. That's pretty important to know. Uh, and that's normally displayed on our appliances, you know, so say they, it's a uh, two kilowatt um, kettle. That's, that's where it's displayed. That's what our rated power is. That's what power out is. It's what we actually use, what we actually get out of it. P in or power input is the total power consumed. And that's including your losses. So that's including any power that is a loss. Um, I know that's right. <clears throat> so within any sort of system, there's always losses. There is always loss. Uh, no system has, has been found to not have losses yet. If you create something that doesn't have losses or has super low, then patent it, get it out there, make lots of money, and everyone wins, right? Well, you win. Um, basically, this part here, I've put a little red dot on. That's because it's a formula and it's a little bit important. Um, so power in is equal to your power out plus your losses. So another way to put this is your total power consumed is equal to the useful power and uh, plus your unuseful power put together. And P in is always greater than P out. Again, that's we've never found that to be untrue. An example, I'll just give you a quick one. And just also say, because um, you guys in your um, your books, your learning uh, books, they I tend to go through it and have a look at what they're showing you there. And now when I give examples, I, I try to give them a little bit different than the ones you have in your books, just so that you have more than one example. Though they may be pretty similar, it's always good to have um, two or more than just one. Um, so for this example, I want you to find power in if the rated power or uh, P out is equal to three kilowatts and your P loss is equal to 500 watts. Now, so I've just put here P loss, that's just losses, but uh, it is a power loss. Uh, so for this, following this formula up, up top, we're going to say that P in is equal to 3000, which is our P out up here, plus 500, which is our losses in this case. Um, so our P in would be 3500 watts or 3.5 kilowatts. So to back up this part here, that you can see P in, so the amount of power we have to put into the system is greater than your rated power, which is your power out. So 3.5k power in is higher than 3 kilowatts power out. Okay, now this doesn't, this is not really explained in your, in your books, uh, but if you remember last week we did a few calculations on uh, power and how much it costs, um, a few examples. So I wanted you guys to, to see why is power loss important? And this is why I said before, if you ever find something that has very small losses or no losses, you can make a lot of money. And that is because the, if you have low losses, or the lower losses you have is the less money spent on useless power. So obviously if you own a business um, and you've got ongoing uh, power and it's costing you money, uh, the lower the losses you have, the less you're spending on, on, on power that you're not really using because it's useless power. Uh, so that's, that's actually why power loss is quite important. One of the reasons, probably one of the main ones. Okay, so now we're going to move on to motor losses. Let's check this here. Um, so this is in your book or your e-learning, um, online e-learning. 
Um, but I'll just write it down and, and talk over it a little bit. So if you want to read up the full explanation for these losses, it is in your online on your e-learning site. Um, but in short, uh, there's there's four main types of motor losses, motor power losses. I should actually have put here. Um, the first one is friction. So you've got moving parts within within a motor, as you guys can all imagine, um, and this is going to cause heat through friction. Friction. This heat is useless. It doesn't um, attribute to to us spinning anything at all. It doesn't give us anything that we we want. Um, now windage. This is probably one that's uh, it's not on every single motor, uh, but for say you know most bigger motors um, or medium motors, we have internal cooling fans. Now this is to this one's a good one to look at to kind of get the uh, gist of the word useful and unuseful because you can see here I've written down internal cooling fans are useful for preventing motor overheating so they are they are useful in that uh, regard so they do have a purpose but they're useless at making the motor turn hence it's a loss. So we, we, we count this as a loss because it doesn't actually help the motor turn at all. Uh, it does help it in other ways, but not for the actual uh, task, which is to make the, the motor turn and or turn as fast as possible, depending on what we want. Um, now, this next one here, iron loss, um, we, that'll be covered a lot more, I think, at level two, uh, when you get into a little bit more about... Um, electromagnetics, uh, induction, uh, things like that. Um, there's, there's a lot to it, but for now all you need to know is electromagnetic induction, it causes iron inside the motor to get hot. And of course if that's getting hot, it's not attributing to our task, so hence it's a loss. Uh, if you did want to know a little bit more about that, there are so many videos on YouTube. So if you're curious, you're bored, you feel like watching a video, I, I suggest you go and do that. It's actually um, quite interesting and you will have to learn it eventually. Okay, so copper loss. Um, now this one's kind of similar to, you know, like uh, elements. Uh, so your heater at home, they use not specifically copper, but they, they use an element that gets hot. So... Uh, this is similar because, you know, the internal copper windings of a motor, again, you're probably not too sure about what that is yet, but there's internal copper windings um, that carry current. Now, <clears throat> sorry, I've written this a little bit weird. So internal copper windings, they get hot as the resistance, I've just put R here, the resistance opposes current flow. So current is flowing through your copper windings. We have resistance in those copper windings. And like all elements, that's how they get hot. You know, that, that's the whole reason why a resistor gets hot is because there's current flowing through it and it's resisting it. Sorry guys, phone call. Just hang that up. Um, so this one here is quite quite good. Um, copper loss could also be seen, in not specifically just copper, but even th there's a cable going to the motor itself. Now there will be a loss in that supply cable to the motor and we actually will be covering that here um, so the example given and it's it's similar to the one inside um, your book or the e-learning site so it's to find the power loss of the supply cable so just want to go up for a sec just to kind of go over this because I, I had a look at it and I could see that that could be a little bit confusing so these four losses here are actually nothing to do with this next example this copper loss is, is similar, very similar in fact, but it's not one of these. These four here are inside the motor, when you're in the motor. This here is for the supply cable outside of the motor, the one that's actually bringing power to the motor itself. So if you had a few things here, oh wow, that's not very good. <laughs> Our resistance is equal to that. Mm -hmm. That's not very good. Hold on guys, I'll just fix that up. I think for my example, I just used one. Yep. So I just made it nice and easy. Oh. OK, 
Okay, so if the resistance of the cable is equal to just one ohm, and the V supply, now I've put in brackets here, not V cable. Now this is really important and it will be covered down here. So V cable is the volt drop across the cable. So V supply is equal to 230 volts, which is just a single phase. So that's if you ever see single phase and, and you don't see any uh, voltage somewhere, but they've used this here within a question, they mean 230 volts. Okay. And oh, sorry, and also the total power, power in, also the total power drawn is three kilowatts. So that's not actually the rated power of the motor, it's, it's the entire uh, amount of power drawn. Now I've put this here, this little dot here, so we can't actually use this equation at the moment, power is equal to V squared divided by R. We can't use that because we don't know V cable, we don't know the volt drop across the cable. So if you're trying to find a power loss, you have to use the, if you were to use this here, you'd have to use the voltage that's dropped across that cable not the voltage that is being supplied. Remember if we have a, um, <clears throat> a, a circuit uh, and you've got a few resistors in there, they all have a different voltage drop across it or a different voltage potential for each of those resistors. Well, it's the same here. At the moment for this example, we don't know what that volt drop is. So that's what V cable is representing, the volt drop across the cable. So we'll actually have to use, and I should write this down, even though this is the answer here, I'll just write down what we are using. I'll just do a little arrow. So we're going to be using P is equal to I squared R. Because we can find what I is. So we will use that as our um, power formula. So to begin with, we need to find out what I is. What's, what's the current going through the cable? Now we know the, the total power being drawn is 3000 watts or 3 kilowatts uh, and uh, so, sorry guys, have a mirror here, uh, sorry, okay we're using I is equal to P divided by V, now I've put VS here just to uh, reiterate that it's the voltage supply not voltage of uh, the cable, well in this case that's the same but Sorry, 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 I just contradicted myself. Not the voltage drop across the cable, it's the voltage supply. Okay, so current is gonna be equal to power, which is three kilowatts divided by our voltage supply, which is 230. So through that cable, we'll have 13.04 amps. So from there, if we wanna figure out what the power is, we're gonna use this equation. So I'll just do this. Cool. So we know that's what we're figuring out. So power loss is going to be equal to our amperage, which is this here. So 13.04 to the power of 2 times 1. Now 1 is just our resistance. If you remember, resistance up here was just 1 ohm. Just to make it nice and easy, there's no point in putting big numbers in at the moment. So the power loss across the cable will be equal to 170 watts. So this is true for, for most things that we have. If you guys ever wire anything up, there's always a power loss within the cable. Now, most of the time, if it's a short run, uh, it's going to be very small. The, the power loss is very small. But usually for motors inside industrial, you can get some really big cables, uh, some very big power uh, ratings. And that can actually lead to, to decently um, sized power losses. Though for that scenario, you can't really do anything about it because it's a loss within the cable. Okay, so that's where I got up to with writing. Okay, so from here, we're gonna move on to efficiency. We won't be too much longer, guys. Maybe another 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. I'll take the roll at the end, like usual. Well, it seems like a few of you 
uh, dropping in and out of the stream. Not sure what's going on there. Hopefully everything's all right. Actually, I'll go down a bit further. Okay. So here we have efficiency. Sorry, that's not the best. Okay, so the symbol used for efficiency. Is this in here? Uh, they don't always have this squiggly line. I think most of the time it goes down, but for some reason I always have a squiggly line. That's me, not um, not the actual one. So I should rub that out. Uh, that's like most things, most formulas. That's a Greek Greek um, letter in the alphabet. I actually can't remember what it's called, but that's that doesn't really matter. This is what the symbol is for efficiency. Okay, so, so we did talk, talk about this, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And it's really not too bad. If efficiency is basically, I'm just going to write it as N for now. It's just your power out divided by power in, which is really not too hard. It's always going to be a ratio between the two. Now, um, we know that P in is always going to be greater than P out, like, like we looked at before, um, because, because of losses. So that means that N, and I'm going to do this, this here, this means can't equal to. It can't equal 100%. Now I talked about this in, in I think it was, yeah, two lectures ago. Shit, it's dropped down to four people watching. That's not good. Or at least that's what it says at the moment. Just wondering whether there's something going on. Or whether it's just uh, my stream saying that. Anyways, I'll carry on for now. Okay, so efficiency can't be equal to 100%. We're never getting out the same amount that we're putting in because there's always going to be a loss. All right, so I'll just do a quick example. Okay, so find N, efficiency I should say, should stop calling it N, um, if power in is equal to one kilowatt and power out, uh, where is it here, is equal to 800 watts, uh, specifically used kilowatt here and watts here just to give you guys a little bit more practice on your converting. Okay, so all we have to do for this is to put in 800 watts divided by 1000 watts, which is equal to 0 0.8. Now if we want to find percentage, um, we just times that by 100 which gives us 80%. Okay, so that one's not, not too hard. Um, so that's, that's how to find your efficiency. That, that's all you ever have to do. So that one's not too bad at all. Um, I just want to give you another example. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give you another example, including a few of these things that we've just learned. After that, there's not too much more to do. So this example. 
be a little bit bigger than the one above. Okay, so let's say that we have a 2.2 kilowatt, a bit bigger, uh, kettle. It's single phase. So remember that's 230 volts. Um, N is equal to 0 0.95. Again, I've, I've put this as 0 0.95, or you can read that as 95%. And then, <clears throat> okay, so from this, we want to calculate, or I'll say find, find P in. Oh, oh, sorry guys, that's really messy. Find P in, there we go, it's a little bit better. And input current drawn. Okay, so. To first start off, um, we want to figure out what P in is. Uh, that considering we have P out, because this is the rated, uh, the rating of the kettle, 2.2, .2, so rating is equal to P out. We also have our efficiency, which is 95%. So to find P in, all we have to do, oh, sorry, my screen's about to turn off. Cool. Okay, so P in is just going to be P out divided by efficiency, which in this case is 2,200 watts divided by 0 0.95. And that's going to be equal to 2, oh, that's a 3, 2315.79 watts. Now I've Usually, uh, if, if this is me, maybe studying myself, I, I wouldn't actually write all of this. I, I would make it a little bit easy for myself, just call it 2315. But because you guys, when you do your quizzes, you're asked to put a lot of things to two decimal places. So I'll try to keep my answers the same way that you guys are expected to do so. Okay, so that's PN done. So now if we want to find the current, this one's nice and easy again. We're just going to be using a P in. So the total power consumed, which is 2,315.79 divided by our voltage supply. Our voltage supply is here. So this is kind of similar to the, the question we did um, earlier on with um, power losses. This one's actually finding out um, just the PN and the current. So that's 230. That comes out to be basically just 10 amps. But for the reason I said before with the whole rounding parts, 10.07 amps. Um, so, other than that, oh wait, one last thing to write down. So, why is efficiency important? Let's write down here, importance of efficiency. That's pretty similar to, to power losses uh, because they are uh, heavily related. So it's the same thing with, um, so I'll just write down here, same as P loss, which is talking about the money. Um, so actually I'll rewrite this. Probably not the best way to put it. Obviously, the, the better efficiency we have, 
the less losses we have, and that saves us money. Oops. So I'll just write up here better, better in for efficiency equals less loss. And we know that less loss is better. And then also, uh, this is not directly re related to efficiency, but through efficiency, we can, so right here, we can, we can use efficiency to figure out how much power in there is, just like we did above. I'm just gonna write F like this for efficiency to find PN. Now, this is, that's why I said it's not entirely true because we also can use losses to figure out what PN is. Uh, but I'm gonna write this down and maybe you can take it as for, for both things. So we're gonna use efficiency to find PN, which helps us choose cable sizes. Um, and, and to elaborate on that, we always want to use PN for for cable sizing, so for how much current there is in a, in a cable, because you don't want to use P out, because P out, remember, is always going to be less than PN, so we always want to be sure that the cable is big enough to begin with. So there's a lot of racket going on outside. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Um, so this one a little bit less, well, it's important, but there's other ways we can figure out what PN is and, and what uh, cable we need to choose. But other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. It looks like most of you guys are back now. I'm not sure what happened there. If Does anyone know? Is it, are you guys just dropping out or... Uh, is the stream stopping? Is it all good? If you guys could, anyone can tell me if anyone knows anything on the chat. Um, other than that, uh, if you guys can all just write your names down like we normally do in the chat, and then I'll take that. Right. There's about 10 of you on there. Um, obviously, I'll give everyone else a little bit more of a chance. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. Yeah, so if you just keep keep on working on um, all your quizzes and stuff, it's good to see that a lot of you are up to date. And for you, uh, those of you who aren't, yeah, please please crack on into it, um, especially if you've got nothing going on at the moment, um, being in lockdown. Um, and if you need any help, yeah, I'm always here. You can always flick through an email with any help you need. Other than that, yeah, you guys are free to go. And have a good week.